Morgan, the Econ 1050 course coordinator for this semester. Welcome to the course. I'm making this video to cover some material that we usually have to sort of rush through in lecture one. What we'll cover is the uh, Econ 1050 website on uq.learn. That's where you'll find all the lecture material, tutorial material, lecture videos, and uh, assessment such as online quizzes. Just in case you haven't found uq.learn yet, we'll start at the UQ homepage. Select current students, My UQ, and then go to My UQ dashboard. On the menu over on the left, we have learn.uq. Select that. Sign in, then you find your list of courses. We're selecting Econ 1050. The home page is the announcements page. You should check the announcements of your courses regularly. It's one of the main ways we contact students. We'll work our way down the menu on the left. The electronic course profile, ECP, is very important. That's the official document for the course. First page gives some details about the course and the course staff, contact details and so on. So we have my details. Kim Scott is our administrator and her contact details, econ1050 at uq.edu. You send emails to Kim in the first instance. Our PASS coordinator is Abby Smith. I'll talk about PASS a little bit more later. We have the aims and the objectives, learning resources. It's mainly the textbook there. It's quite a good textbook. I'd encourage you to buy that, either in the hard copy or ebook form. The ebook's quite good and about half the price of the hard copy. The two sections uh, that are most important here are the learning activities and assessment. Learning activities tell you all about what's happening in the course through the semester. So on the uh, left we have the details of the lectures, the topics, um, the reference for the textbook, information about breaks and so on, public holidays. On the right we have the corresponding tutorials. So tutorials are one week behind the lectures. Assessment. Well, we have a number of assessment items. During the semester, we have five quizzes. Basically, they're there to encourage you to keep up to date. These are the times of the quizzes. They'll be open for about a week. And each quiz is worth four percentage points. They're online quizzes, and you'll do those through My Math Lab, which I'll mention in more detail in a moment. We have a mid-semester exam as well on one of these Saturdays, either the 30th of March, 6th or 13th of April. We'll find out the exact date towards the middle of March. And then at the end of the semester, we have a final exam. So quizzes, 20% overall. Mid-semester exam covers lectures 1 to 4. It's worth 30%. And the final exam worth 50%. Going back to learn.uq. Well, it's officially known as learn.uq, but everyone calls it Blackboard. If we go back to our home page, we'll see why. So Blackboard is the... The name of the commercial platform that's used for learn.uq. Now, we have a course staff folder, has the same information as the ECP. Course help, a little bit of information about, well, support, student support. You can go there and list all the various uh, places where you can get help at UQ for all sorts of things, from academic concerns uh, down to uh, spiritual health. There's a little bit of information about the course content there, uh, tutorials and pass, which we'll mention in a moment. Consultation. Each week from uh, week two, we'll have a consultation period. During those times, you can go and visit any tutor or come and see me if you have questions about course content. We also have some information about assessment. Well, there's more information about the online quizzes in the My Math Lab folder. There's also information there about deferred exams and supplementary exams. We'll talk more about those as we get closer to the mid-semester exam. The big folder is learning resources. Here we'll have the lecture recordings. These are the recordings of the live lectures, and they'll be available with about 48 hours of the actual lecture. A little bit of information about our textbook again. An activities timeline, this is the same information that's in the ECP, but in a diagrammatic form. We have our weeks there. It's all colour-coded. 
Weeks 1 to 4 are tested in the mid-semester exam. Here are our possible dates for the mid-semester exam. Weeks 5 to 13 are tested in the final exam. We have our break, mid-semester break there. We see the lecture topics are colour-coded, uh, so we have pairs of lectures there, and then the corresponding tutorials and past sessions. The colour-coding refers to the quizzes, so quiz 1 tests lectures 1 and 2, quiz 2 lectures 3 and 4 and so on. Here are the dates of the uh, quizzes, just to remind you there. Uh, the quizzes open at 9am and close at 2pm on the final day. We also have a diagnostic test and practice quiz that are open from the start of the semester. The diagnostic test is there for you to test your basic algebra skills to see if they're up to scratch. Going back, we have folders for each week. So we cover a topic per week. In each week's folder, we have the lecture notes in two formats, either six slides per page if you want to print them, or one slide per page if you want to transfer those uh, slides to your uh, iPad or notebook. In each lecture we'll go through examples. I've put up the examples, worked examples there beforehand. So you don't really need to rush to copy them down during the lecture. You can if you want to, of course. And then we have uh, tutorial questions. These are already up there for the whole semester. First week we have the lecture. The following week we have the tutorial. Uh, you should have signed on for a tutorial. That's compulsory as well as recording of the live lectures. I've also got a full set of recordings of lectures. They're available via YouTube. These recordings are broken up into modules. So they're much shorter than the, the two hour lecture. They vary from 10 to 20 minutes per module. The lectures are broken up into from uh, three to five modules. These YouTube lectures are different from the live lecture recordings. If you're familiar with it, they're more in the style of the Khan Academy. They're a little bit more concise than the live lectures, and as I say, they're broken up into modules. But the material covered is basically the same. All the materials except the tutorial answers are available for all the topics throughout the semester. So let's go down to, say, topic 8. We have the, the lecture notes there, the examples, the tutorial questions, and the online version of the lectures. So if you want to work ahead by yourself, you can do that. Uh, the only thing you have to wait for is the answers to the tutorials. They're posted at the end of each week. Assessment. So here's another summary of the assessment details. We'll have information about the mid-semester exams and the final exam in these folders. The online quizzes, they have a separate folder. That's the My Math Lab folder there. We have the discussion board there. I'll be setting up a, a more user-friendly version of the discussion board called Piazza in the next uh, week or so. Migrate, uh, that's where you can look up uh, the results from the quizzes and your exams. Library links, just some information there for the library, quite useful. My Math Lab, this is where you'll find all the information about the quizzes. So we have some instructions there. We have some videos to tell you how to use My Math Lab. So if you're doing Econ 1310, you'll come across CMLs. My Math Lab is a little bit more stringent in the requirements, shall we say. So you really need to go through the instructions quite carefully. This is a video I've created for using My Math Lab in 1050. You really need to look at that before you start the quizzes. These are my Math Lab videos that tell you about well answering questions and overviews of the tests and entering math symbols. Before you do a quiz or, uh, or use my Math Lab, you should check the browser. And when you want to find the quizzes, you need to go through all assignments or course home. You can also access a test bank of questions that are similar to the online quizzes through Study Plan. First it'll come up there with, well, questions from the first chapter, but if you go to all chapters, these are the topics we're covering in the course. So you can work through those there. Let's see, inverse functions, and there are various problems there you can test yourself on. You can do that, well, nearly any time. Uh, they're closed during the, the quizzes, of course. 
to do a browser check before you access my math lab here are the my math lab system requirements you should also check those just to make sure that the device you're using meets the requirements and if you have some problems there's the technical support from Pearson who published my math lab but it's very important to go through these videos and pay attention to the instructions for the quizzes working down our menu on the left there again we have learning pathways uh, this is just another way to access uh, the website if you like we have a to-do list for each topic with links to the various activities the lectures videos and, and so on and we can go through that if you like to tick off activities you can do that as well that's just something extra there consultation times as I mentioned as well as lectures and tutorials we have consultations this is our list of tutors if you have any questions about the course content you can see any of these tutors or myself the tutors are in consult room 1 on level 1 of the Colin Clark building and I'll be in my office on level 5 as I say you don't need to go to your own uh, tutor you can go and see any tutor if you do have questions it's best to take care of them straight away moving down our menu there as well as lectures and tutorials we also have pass these are peer assisted study sessions the sessions where students can get together in a less formal atmosphere than tutorials and discuss the basic concepts associated with the topic there's a video here that explains pass a little bit more there Abby Smith is our pass coordinator this semester and this is our timetable we have four pass sessions for the semester you can drop into any of these sessions each session has two leaders and they facilitate the activities during the session if you go to lectures you go to tutorials and you go to pass you'll have a very solid foundation for each topic and back to our menu our last item on the menu there is student resources this is a list I've put together various links that are useful to students if English is your second language there's an English for academic communication that's quite useful something about the first year experience here we have various workshops that are available through student services uh, lots and lots there and so on IT support library training classes finally a library guide for economics so that's an overview of the econ 1050 blackboard site remember this is the main way we communicate with students so check our announcements regularly see you at the lecture on Tuesday